Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about how activists don't make very good employees. Um, now, that's a very general statement. I'm not saying all people who have, uh, you know, a, a passion for what they believe to be social change or, or policy change are bad people. What I'm talking about are uh, activists who view their workplace as being a platform. Uh, people who are obsessed with their activism, whatever it is, and they view the workplace and the employer's resources as nothing but fodder for them to spout off to other people about what they're doing wrong, uh, using it as, as their own personal pulpit. Uh, we're going to talk about that in relation to Netflix. Uh, Netflix just fired the organizer of the trans employee walkout. And there are other walkouts going on too. I had no idea. Apparently, uh, it is it is uh, strike tober. I had no idea this was a thing. So we're we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Apple, Apple firing uh, employees that leaked confidential information. You know, the, the problem here is that uh, activist employees, you know, believe they are in the right in doing what they're doing with company resources. And they also don't believe they should be reprimanded. They think their companies should have their feet held to the fire. And in some cases, if the company is, you know, abusing people, actually abusing people or doing something illegal, you know, there's something to be said for whistleblowers. In a lot of cases, unfortunately, it's just the activist has their panties or tidy whities in a bunch right? And uh, about something going on at the company and they're going to fight, fight, fight until they get one of two results. Either the company gets bad press, gets a black eye. Uh, the company has to come to Jesus with the, uh, with the media or the employee loses their job, in which case they go complain uh, about that too. Uh, it happens often, you know, look at, uh, look at Kickstarter. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about that with the, uh, the union, and a lot of these employees that are unionizing now thinking that if they unionize, they can uh, shit on their employers as much as they want to without repercussion. And if the employer gets rid of them, they have to buy them out. Uh, it's kind of like a tick, right? You got to get the head out, you know, because you can still get Lyme disease. Uh, so let's talk about this, this new, I mean, this is a very new mindset, I think. And I don't know if it's a generational thing or if the world is just going crazy or what. But uh, a lot of people working for companies now seem to forget that the company is paying them for a service. And for the most part, you do your job. You're allowed to have your opinions as long as it doesn't interfere with your job. If you don't like the way the company is going, look at Spotify. Spotify is another one, right? The employees think they get to dictate the content that's on their platform. Um, and, and that's the thing. Like, it's like working at McDonald's and thinking you get to dictate what's on the menu when your job was to simply flip burgers and take orders. If you want to dictate what's on the menu, you go start your own company. That's, that's how that works. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants guys over 237,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Geeky is sitting this one out. She's out and about this morning. So you're stuck with me and uh, we'll see where this one goes. Cause uh, you know, we, we have been talking a lot about this because a lot of the companies that are uh, kind of, you know, at the mercy of their activist employees are entertainment companies. You know, a lot of them are based in California. You know, we have Blizzard, we have Netflix, you know, Apple, Disney, Kickstarter, you know, they're entertainment companies and the employees, you know, seem to think that they have a right to, to dictate what these platforms, what kind of content they show. And this is, this is a very recent development before, if you didn't like something a company did, you quit, you went someplace else. God knows there are plenty of places to work right now. You know, you don't like what Blizzard's doing. You don't like, and we'll talk about Blizzard because that's that's a little different situation. But I think it's it's uh, there are some people there taking advantage of it. Unfortunately, um, you don't like the content that Netflix has on their platform. You don't like the content Spotify has on their platform. Either you get a promotion and you get to decide what the content is, or you resign and you go someplace else that you know uh, where they don't. Um, you know, offend your sensibilities, you know, you go drive an Uber or something. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know what to tell you. 
Um, your job when you work for a company is to basically carry out the orders that they give you. And if you don't like it, if there's a, a, a moral conflict, I mean, it's kind of the same thing with, you know, uh, you know, people who are religious, you know, Christians or Muslims at certain jobs or certain things that they're probably not going to do because it conflicts with their personal worldviews, their, their religious beliefs. And that's, that's completely fine. But you can't expect the company uh, to, t to change just for you or just for a handful of employees. Um, this article coming from Bloomberg Law, talking about the new age of employee activism. Uh, it's great for the employees, right? Not so good for the employers. Uh, walkouts and demonstrations at companies such as Blizzard, Facebook, and Amazon herald a new age of employee activism tied not only to wages and working conditions, but to values and principles. Says Angela Reddock, Wright, founder of Reddock Law Group. She contends employees are gaining leverage and successful companies will listen to their concerns. No, they won't. Uh, they won't. You know, uh, talking about the, the uh, uh, walkout at Blizzard, you know, the maker of uh, Call of Duty, Candy Crush, World of Warcraft, because they were, they were protesting their perception of the company's tone-deaf response to a state lawsuit charging it with discrimination and harassment against women in the workplace. Now, you know, look, I think there were some shitty things that went on at, at Activision, but, you know, what happens a lot of times is things are, you know, situations are blown out of proportion. We saw this happen with Kickstarter. Um, Kickstarter formed a union because they were angry, the employees were angry that they weren't allowed to have a certain comic book on the platform. I think it was called Always Punch Nazis. Management said, yeah, that's too too dicey. We really don't want to have that on our platform. It incites violence. It could be taken the wrong way. We really don't want that on the platform. Thanks for your concern. Go back to work. Well, that wasn't good enough. Uh, wasn't good enough, so they formed a union. They also, you know, while this was going on, they also made sure they... Uh, you know, denied uh, Comicsgate people from being able to go on the platform, even though their comics did not violate terms of service. So as, you know, this went down, they formed a union. Again, this was about being able to dictate the content that the company uh, was, you know, had on their platform. It had nothing to do with working conditions. It had nothing to do with, you know, long hours. I mean, in, in cases like that, if companies are abusing, actually abusing employees, taking advantage of them, I, I would say, yeah, you know, maybe you want to unionize or something uh, or just go find another job. You know, that's always an option, right? I, I worked for a company one time. I used to work uh, for newspapers and I worked for a company one time that uh, everybody was talking about unionizing. And you know what the owner did? He sold the company. <laughs> He's like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. I'm getting too old for this shit. I'm going to sell the company and the next owner can deal with it. And what happened was since the company was sold, uh, everybody had to start over again. He, I think he fired a bunch of people and he said, yeah, we're not, we're not doing this. You guys are getting paid plenty. Uh, you only work, some of you work 36 hours a week, you know, it's, it's, you, you don't need to unionize. Um, and that's what happened. I actually just quit because I, I was working ridiculous hours, but I'm like, yeah, this is, it's a good time to exit stage. Right. Anyway, uh, Kickstarter used the pandemic as an excuse to get rid of these, uh, troublemaking, unionized employees, including Camilla Zhang, and they pled poverty. They're like, oh, we're just not doing so good. Man, things suck right now. We really got to lay you guys off. Um, we do. And then like right after they laid all the union workers off, they're like, hey, things are great. We're hiring again. We're hiring uh, people at Kickstarter. They, they, they did it to get rid of their uh, activist employees or some of their activist employees. Now I'm not saying that the, the people they have running comics right now aren't activists. I've, I've read some stuff. I'm like, Oh God, here we go again. But I have to think that Kickstarter has made it very obvious that like, look, you can have your opinions. You don't have to like some of the stuff that we have on our platform, but at the end of the day, we got to make money, right? Uh, you can do your activism on weekends. You know, lots of stories from different businesses talking about woke employees trying to cancel them. You know, these people have, inside information, your company, you know, and, and if their primary concern isn't your company, your business, but rather their activism, um, and they think your company conflicts with that for whatever reason, I don't know, again, I don't know if it's generational, cultural, what the thing is, they, they think that they can, uh, they can force their workplace to, to accommodate them, to, change their policies just for them. And usually it's a very small group of, of people that complain. Again, 
I have no issue with anybody that, you know, has social causes that are near and dear to them as long as it doesn't interfere with uh, business. You know, we have to we have to run a business, uh, have to make money. And not everybody's going to going to view things the same way. Look what happened with uh, Shopify. They got a lot of pushback, but I have a hell of a lot of respect for them. They're, they're basically like politics don't have a place in the workplace. You know, not like that. You guys are welcome to, you know, go to uh, parades or, or uh uh, you know, protests on weekends or whatever, but, but not on company time, not using company resources and, and, you know, employers are within their rights uh, to do that. You know, I don't know why, why employees now seem to think that they can just do uh, wherever the hell they want to do with impunity. And I think it's because of social media, you know, they've learned how to play the game. They, they, for a, a long time for, you know, five, six, seven years, were able to use social media to give the impression that more people agreed with them than actually agreed with them. And they would use social media to bully other employees, to bully their bosses out of a job, to bully consumers, you know, to bully their employers. And I think it's, it's not working anymore because just in the last couple of months, we've seen these companies strike back pretty damn hard. And, and what happens is, you know, it's going to be like, Oh, it's because I'm X, Y, Z kind of person that you're attacking me. It's like, no, because you violated, you know, your, your employment agreement because you, you try to cause trouble, you know, for our company and cost our company money. So you have to go. So, you know, going forward, hopefully these companies learn a lesson and they're like, yeah, let's, let's vet these employees better. You know, let's vet them better and check out, maybe check out their social media before we hire them. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Cause that, you know, you don't want to let a fox into the hen house, right? So here's an update on the Dave Chappelle situation. Netflix just fired the organizer of the trans employee walkout. How very dare they? But you'll find out that it's not because uh, this person's trans or black and that's what they're trying to make it out to be. It's because they, they broke the rules. They caused the company a lot of trouble. Uh, the company suspects they leaked metrics about the Dave Chappelle special to the press. Again, that violates your terms of service. If you signed an NDA with the company and you're leaking company data, and this isn't like the company's abusing people the company's doing something illegal. This is like, well, we're going to make the company look as bad as possible. I'm sorry. You get shit can. That's how it works. And Netflix has fired a leader of the trans employee resource group who is organizing the upcoming October 20th walkout. The employee who is black and currently pregnant asked not to be named for fear of online harassment. They have been encouraging trans employees and allies to walk out of work in protest of Netflix's handling of the Dave Chappelle special, The Closer. The employee declined to speak to The Verge for the story. All these white people are going around talking to the press and speaking publicly on Twitter, and the only person who gets fired is the black person who was quiet the entire time, says a former employee in an interview with The Verge. That's absurd and just further shows that black trans people are the ones being targeted in this conversation. I could, again, argue that they're being targeted because they're the ones who leaked confidential information to the press and it violated their terms of employment and they just happened to be black and trans. Uh, just call me crazy, call me crazy. But that's that, that would be uh, my reaction to this. The employee was terminated on suspicion of leaking metrics to the press related to the Dave Chappelle special. Those metrics about how much Netflix paid for the closer and how many people it reached subsequently ended up in a report on Bloomberg. Uh, supposedly, I think it was like they paid 23 or 24 million for it. And it only brought in what they, they, they thought was about $19 million in view time or something like that. So the point being you overpaid for Chappelle, you know, and you threw us under the bus and you overpaid for Chappelle. And you know what though, that's the company's business. Uh, companies make bad deals all the time or companies make deals that looked like a bad deal at the time, but they have a long tail. You know, you overpay for a company now um, because 10 years from now, you can maybe flip those assets or you've got something that that company has that you know is going to be worth something later on. And it evens itself out. You know, frankly, what the company paid for, uh, you know, as an employee, what the company paid for that for Chappelle is none of your business. You know, if that's not your job description, if you're not the person, you know, in charge of acquisitions, it's not your business. Just, you know, do what you, you're paid to do. And if you don't like it, you go someplace else. Well, the employee had shared the metrics internally. They spoke out against the leaks to colleagues, worried that they might hurt 
uh, the walkout movement. The leaking of internal data is highly unusual at Netflix. Well, we're learning more and more. And Kevin Smith, uh, God bless Kevin Smith. Uh, he basically told us that Netflix doesn't care. As long as there's buzz about a show, they don't care if it's bad buzz. They just like the buzz. They're like, we don't care what our subscribers think. We, we're just looking for view time or whatever. And that, that might be the case. It might be like, people can shit on this show all they want, but if they're watching it just to shit on it, we're, we're still you know, validating this thing existing. You know, while the company prides itself on transparency, employees are told that no, they don't. They never give you metrics. They do not. Employees are told the culture can only thrive when Netflix data remains internal. Yeah, because I think people would realize that this stuff doesn't get watched nearly as much uh, as as uh, and then they would start to ask questions like, well, why why didn't you promote this show but you promoted that show? You spent a bunch of money promoting this show, and nobody's watching this show. Or hey, this thing's supposed to be this big hit, and it's it's actually not. A Netflix spokesperson confirmed the employee's dismissal. We have let go of an employee for sharing confidential, commercially sensitive information outside the company. We understand this employee may have been motivated by disappointment and hurt with Netflix, but maintaining a culture of trust and transparency is core to our company. Um, so there, yeah, I mean, look, they got rid of them. And it's not just uh, Netflix, Apple. Within you know a week or so, Apple just fired a leader of the Apple II movement. Uh, Janique Parrish was terminated for deleting files off her work phone, including the apps Robinhood, Pokemon Go, and Google Drive. Uh, Apple has fired a leader of the Apple II movement amid a broad crackdown on leaks and worker organizing. Uh, Parrish, a program manager on Apple Maps, was terminated for deleting files off her work devices during an internal investigation and action Apple categorized as non-compliance according to people familiar with the situation. Internally, some employees expressed disbelief Firing could be anything other than retaliation for organizing. Kickstarter <laughs> plead, pled poverty. They pleaded poverty. They said, oh, we're doing so bad. We're, we have to let you guys go. And then as soon as they let all these union employees go, they turned right around and hired replacements for them. Uh, Non-union replacements. That's how that works, guys. This is what happens. We keep telling people. I never said I was anti-union. Um, but I've been in situations before where when people attempt to unionize, whether, you know, especially with journalists, because you guys aren't as, as valuable as you think you are. I've been in situations like that. And usually what happens is the employer gets rid of you because you're going to be a pain in the ass. You know, <laughs> that's the second time in recent months that an employee has been terminated after speaking out about Apple's company culture. In September, the tech giant fired uh, Ashley Jovic for allegedly leaking confidential information. Uh, they fired, uh, filed multiple charges with the NLRB related to how Apple treated her and the broader workforce. Apple, how long until Apple, Blizzard, and Netflix all move to Texas? They'll follow uh, Tesla, I guess, right? Uh, Leia's charge alleges that Tim Cook's anti-leaking memo might violate U.S. labor law. In September, the CEO sent a note to all Apple employees saying that people who leak confidential information do not belong at Apple. He also said the company was doing everything in our power to identify those who leaked. That is, again, terms of service. I heard a story with uh, uh, Steve Jobs. I guess he would just randomly ask people for their iPhones. And if you didn't have it uh, password protected, you were fired on the spot because he didn't want, you know, we've, we've seen iPhones get leaked all the time. We've seen Apple technology get leaked all the time. And, um, you know, I have to agree with them. I mean, if you signed papers saying you're not allowed to talk about what you see at Apple, nobody's forcing you to be there. You know, you can go someplace else, right? Um, Apple's recent actions seem designed to chill worker organizing. They'll just outsource to somebody else, you know, including Apple. Uh, they said uh, uh, in August, employees launched the Apple II website to allow workers across the company, including Apple Care and Retail, to submit stories about workplace harassment and discrimination. Look, I'm not saying that these things don't happen, right? But what I'm saying is you have a certain uh, kind of, of person who goes into a situation, almost, I, I would say in bad faith, looking for problems. In a lot of cases, this is, again, not always, but a lot of these employees don't understand that they are employees. They're paid for a service. They're paid to do the job that they were hired to do. And uh, again, un unless it's something illegal, unless it's something horrible, you know, uh, 
And even then, if it is, it's like if you're you're violating your terms of service, whatever, you, you, you're going to deal with the blowback. If it means termination or legal action or whatever, you are paid for a service. You're supposed to give your service to the company that hired you. You have free will. You can go someplace else. If you don't like it, you're, you're allowed to go someplace else. But again, you know, these activists, they get into uh, a company and they want the company to change. You know, look at Spotify, all these walkouts, um, you know, for various reasons. Now there was this unwoke.hr website that was like, we'll hire anybody but activists and you can post your non, uh, non-woke uh, jobs on this board. And I, I don't know if it got hacked or taken down or what, but it does seem like companies are slowly starting to learn that they have let foxes into the hen house that uh, these employees that they're hiring, a lot of them do not have, um, you know, their company's best interest in mind, obviously. I'm not saying you have to be a, a yes man, company man, whatever, but just understanding the employee-employer relationship, the basic employee-employer relationship is fundamental. And a lot of these activist types don't. Um, they don't. They, they want the company. They want to be in charge. They all think they should be in charge of the company. And again, you're more than welcome to go start your own company. Good luck with that, you know, for sure. But uh, we're going to keep an eye on this situation because it, it's almost daily now that we're seeing companies that have prided themselves on being quote unquote woke, uh, terminating employees that have, have uh, you know, crossed lines. And, and eventually I think the companies are going to learn that they're going to have to vet their employees a little bit better and they're going to have to be bosses. They can't be friends and not necessarily allies, they're your boss. And it is what it is, and I'm sorry. Start your own lemonade stand, I guess. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.